the Northwestern Railway had just been formed. The expansive line, reaching from Vickerstown to the end at Tidmouth, was going through a tough few years. The line's first two engines were too small to handle the workload. As such, the board of directors had brought many more engines on loan from other railways to help. And I'm sorry to say, frictions existed as the loaned engines treated the resident engines quite poorly. Oi you, take me coaches and up to it. Up to it yourself, I'm getting this train ready. Thomas scoffed. <laughs> Typical little shunter. No sense of duty. Late again! I thought you were supposed to be an express engine! Another engine wished as Edward clanked into the station. Don't blame me. It was a faulty signal. Edward huffed out of breath. Of course, it's always something else. You wouldn't have this kind of mess on the GER. If the board of directors had any sense of progress, they'd allow head office to oversee everything. Another engine was a large Clawton from the LNWR. This engine had glistening red paint with black side plates. This engine, named Afton, was more picky about the kinds of coaches he was given. He saw all the old single-axle Victorian rolling stock as relics. Like the other visiting engines, he was absolutely appalled at the idea of pulling goods trains, because to see a grand engine such as him doing so was an insult. One morning, Afton huffed into the station. He was to be pulling the local stopping service today. But as he neared the station, he hissed angrily as he saw the coaches he'd been given. He was given the small single-axle coaches. While they were painted in the NWR cream and dark green, they were smaller and older than the bogey coaches given. What's this? Oh, I'm pulling this ghastly groaning train today? The indignity of it all! Just be happy you have a train to pull at all! Thomas hissed as he pushed the coaches up. I've had to hunt the yards for extra coaches. Then you can jolly well take these coaches away and bring me some proper coaches i'm busy take them or leave them thomas huffed and hurried away into the yards before afton could say anything more eh come on old boy let's get this over with afton's driver sighed the coaches groaned as afton backed up to them they had heard what afton had called them and were not happy who is this rude engine? asked the lead coach. An improper engine if he's pulling us, said another. I'd rather be pulled by Edward or even Thomas. At least they are proper engines who know how to treat coaches right, the brake coach added. Shut up! I am a proper engine! Better than Tiny Thomas or Old Iron Edward. Now come along! The guard's whistle blew, and Afton huffed out of the station in a rage. His face was almost as red as his paint. As Afton raced down the line, the old coaches groaned and creaked. They were older and were not used to running at express train speeds. They tittered nervously as they rolled along. Slow down! Slow down! They wailed. Shut up! Shut up! Afton barked back. Just then, the brakes on the train came on. Afton stopped suddenly on the viaduct, grumbling dreadfully. An investigation of the coaches showed that the coach just behind the engine had a loose vacuum hose. While the crew set about fixing the problem, Afton fumed angrily. He thought the coaches were doing that on purpose, making him late. Eventually, the brakes came off and the train puffed away. When Afton arrived at the last station, the big red engine hissed mournfully as he moved around the yard to shunt his own coaches away. 
The coaches tittered grumpily as he did so. At last, the journey is over, one said. I felt like my windows were going to fall out, said another. At least you two were further away from him than I was. I had to endure his groaning all the way here, said the lead coach. It would have been better if you'd not decided to hold me up, you rotten old intake. What? You blame me for that? That was your fault. Pull the other one, you horrid thing. It's not my fault you don't know how to pull coaches, you rotten red sausage. Afton quickly lost his temper. His boiler pressure shot up, and amid the hiss of his safety valve, there was a bang, and then a splintering crunch. Afton hadn't been paying attention when he entered the carriage sidings, and had run his coaches into the buffers hard. The buffers were bent and broken, but they were not the most damaged. That honor belonged to the coach behind Afton's tender. It was squashed between him and the second coach, crushed into a pile of splintered wood and bent metal. The other coaches shrieked in horror at the fate of their sister. Afton just sniffed indignantly. This is what you get for being weak old antiques. If you only been proper coaches, this wouldn't have happened. The directors were not happy with Afton's carelessness. One of them, a man named Topham Hatt, spoke the most severely. If you were our engine, I'd send you away. Afton just sniffed. He didn't care at all. He watched as the broken coach was loaded into some trucks to be taken away. The other coaches were silent during the whole process. After a while, Afton just smirked and backed away to the sheds to rest. Afton's driver was assigned to another engine to learn how to properly handle coaches and Afton himself was shut up in the shed for a few weeks before the directors allowed him to pull trains again. The other visiting engines were the only ones to show any sympathy for his careless handling. During his stay in the shed, a new train was offered by the Northwestern Railway. It was a late night train that offered an express run to Tidmouth called the Midnight Special. The bigger tender engines enjoyed the job immensely. The idea of a non-stop run from one end of the island to the other under the stars made them feel very important. Soon it was Afton's turn to pull the midnight special. About time I had a named train of my own to pull, and with proper coaches, and no less. The only thing better would be the express, he said loudly. The other engines just groaned. They ignored the big red engine's boasting until he left the shed. Afton puffed into the station, bubbling with excitement as he coupled up to the lead coach. He was so excited that he never looked back once at the rank of coaches he was pulling. No one noticed the coach closest to the engine didn't belong in the consist. It was painted cream and green, just like the Express, but it was smaller and had no bogies, just two axles. It was filthier and didn't look like a coach belonging on a prestigious train such as the Midnight Special. The guard blew his whistle and the train set off. Over the sound of the engine puffing, there was a loud groaning noise that came from the lead coach. It sounded like it hadn't been oiled in a long time. Soon, the express passed under the signals and was gone in a cloud of steam. A phone rang in the signal box at Kelsthorpe Road. When the signalman answered it, it was a call from the signalman at Kildane. 
He wanted to know if the Midnight Special had passed through to check that the system was still operating. The Kelsthorpe signalman said he'd received a bell from the Crovensgate signal box a long time ago, but the Express hadn't come yet. He checked his watch. The Express was running half an hour behind. Just before the signalman could hang up the phone to call Crovens Gate to send a work train to check the line, there was a knock at his door. He opened it to see the Midnight Special's guard standing there, panting heavily. Eh, have you seen our engine? He asked. What engine? No engine is passed by my box for over an hour. The guard then went pale. That's, that's not possible. You must be mistaken. I've just come from the Midnight Special and I've not seen our engine anywhere. I swear me mother's head no train puffed past this signal box, I would have seen it. Come on man, you're speaking all kinds of rubbish. I am not. Our entire train is missing its engine. It's like it's disappeared into thin air. Come on mate, have a cup of tea and explain what you're trying to say. A works train was soon dispatched from Crovens Gate. They found all six express coaches sitting on the main line neatly and the irate passengers. From passenger testimony, they said one moment the train was rolling along smoothly, then after the tunnel, the train went slower and slower until the coaches ground to a halt. When they looked out the window to see what the problem was, they saw there was no engine at the front of their train. Workmen investigated the coaches for damage, but none was found. The coupling on the lead coach was intact. While the works engine pulled the train back to the station, the workmen searched up the line. Perhaps the engine had derailed somewhere before Kelsthorpe and the guard just missed it. However, nothing. No trace of an engine, or even an accident, could be found. The engine crew was found the next morning, asleep on a bench at Crovens Gate by a cleaner making the rounds before the first service of the day. When asked how they got there, they had no memory of what happened after their engine entered the tunnel. Just that, one minute they were entering the tunnel, and the next they were waking up on the platform. A massive search was held to look for the engine, but nothing could be found. For a long time, the Midnight Express was discontinued as the more superstitious passengers refused to ride the Express after midnight, worried that if a whole engine could vanish, then why not a whole train of passengers? The mystery deepened when many of the passengers expressed concern for the people who might have gotten in the first coach. The investigators noted that all the coaches were still on the train, but the passengers were insistent that a coach was missing from the express, a small coach just behind the engine. Station staff, porters, and the engine crew of the shunder who assembled the train were just as adamant that they had gathered the rake of six express coaches, no more, no less. After extensive investigations, relief was brought to the passengers to hear that everyone who'd bought a ticket for the Midnight Express was accounted for. But the mystery remained. What happened to the engine and the alleged coach? How could an engine's crew wake up at a station with no memory of how they'd gotten there? To this day, the file remains in the Vickerstown police files as unsolved.